Hey everyone, how we doing out there? Uh, this is Pastor Ray here, and uh, just want to bring you a, a, a great message. It's an honor and a privilege to be sharing with you. And, and I know a lot of you are, are, are just like us here, uh, are, are shut in or, or you can't get together in groups. And that's why some of you are together in your homes and, and, and in smaller meetings. And, and it's a privilege to be able to share this message with you. Uh, at this time uh, because this is a great time for the world to see who Jesus is uh, and, and uh, why he came into this earth. Amen? So I want to share with you out of John 3 16 uh, we'll start there it says for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Should not perish but have everlasting life. See, Jesus came into the world not that you would perish, but he came in the world to give you life. And the Bible says in John 10:10. 10, 10, that he came to give you that life more abundantly. It says that there's one who comes to kill, steal, and to destroy. But he said he goes on and says, I have come that you might have life and have it abundantly or more abundantly. Jesus came into the world to save us as sinners. See, as a sinner, as those of us that, that are not following him, we've been separated from him. And he came into the world to call us to him. In Mark 2 and verse 17, it says, When Jesus heard it, he said to them, They that are, that are whole have, have no need of a physician, but they who are sick, I have come not to call the righteous, but to call the sinners to repentance. Which takes me to one of my favorite scriptures that, feel, that fills in or, or deals with this time that we're in today. And it will fit for what it deals with us today. It says in the Bible, in Mark chapter 5, and verse 25, it says there that a woman, there's a woman, or, or there's this person that had uh, this virus, or this hemorrhage for 12 years, or this virus, it fits for us today. And just like today, it says that, that she had endured... Uh, much at the hands of physicians or those who are around us. And it says that she had spent all that she had had to get help, but it had only grown worse. And we see that happening today with this virus. And you have the same opportunity that with this virus that you could be in fear uh, over this just probably much the same as she was when nobody could help her but it says in verse 27 it says after hearing about Jesus and that's why many of you are here now you're hearing about Jesus it says after hearing about Jesus came into the crowd up behind him and touched his garment. For she thought that if I touch his garment, I shall be made well. Or that I should be made whole. It says, and immediately the flow of her blood or her disease 
or her virus cease to operate in her body. And it says that she was completely healed. Much the same as you, if you follow after him or seek after him or touch his garment, come to him. After hearing about him, you shall be made whole and receive your healing complete. It says, for she thought, that means that when she thought on it, she meditated because she heard about Jesus and she meditated about him. That means that her, from her voice, she constantly was talking about and murmuring about who he was. It says that she was fully persuaded. She had placed herself in position to receive and she was fully persuaded. She was fully persuaded to hear what Jesus had for her. And she was fully persuaded that she would be healed. Say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I am fully persuaded. And I am healed. And it says that, that she knew that all she had to do was touch his garment in that fully persuaded. And this is all after hearing him. She was fully persuaded. All I have to do is touch his garment. And I will get well. And the Bible tells us that immediately she was healed. Just the same as in these meetings, many people have left here, not only in relationship with Jesus, but many have left here immediately healed. In fact, this happened so uh, so quickly that it says here, it says, and immediately Jesus, so he uh, uh, realized what had taken place immediately. It says, and perceiving that in himself that power had left from him and gone forth into someone else. So this means that, 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 that Jesus wasn't there touching her. It means that it, it immediately happened because she had known that all she had to do was come into his presence, touch his garment, and that she would be healed. And he turned around and he said to, to his disciples and to the crowd, Who touched me? Who touched my garments? And they said, well, look around, you know, in this group, many people are touching you. However, he said, no, one touched me and my power went forth. Say, I'm the one. Say, I'm the one for Jesus' power. I am the one to get healed. I am the one who will be saved. I am the one. And the Bible says that he turned and looked to her because she had said, you know, she, she was trembling because she couldn't be in a crowd, much like you all are meeting in small groups and we are meeting in groups here in our country. We can't get together in large groups, and so we're meeting in small groups. Much the same, 
she 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 was in trembling because she couldn't get she couldn't she wasn't allowed to be in that in that group because of the disease or the virus that she had it says that she came and fell down at his feet and said it was me I'm the one that was healed I'm the one that immediately was healed and he looked to her and he said your faith has made you well your faith has made you whole he said go in peace and be healed of your affliction Go in peace and be healed of whatever ails you. Go in peace and know that you are healed. But not only was she healed, it says here, you've been made well. That word well there means you've been made whole. That means that anything that, that, that was taken from you will be restored back. Remember in, in, at the beginning of this, the, the doctor, she had set, seen many doctors and could not get well. But only have grown worse. There's many times that we see many people in our lives and we don't get whole, we don't get healed, we only grow worse. But he says you've been made whole. All things that have been taken from you will be restored back. In this time of, uh, uh, of how you're limited and who you meet and who you're around and, and what people you can come in contact with, you will be made whole. You will be made whole. Say, thank you, Jesus. I am whole. All things are restored back. Now, there's some, some things here I want you to understand. Someone had to tell her about Jesus. That's me. That's part of the leadership in that meeting that you're sitting in now. And you came to hear and positioned yourself to receive. That was her. Again, someone told her. She positioned herself to receive. And then she did an action. She reached out to Jesus. For she thought. She meditated on it. She was fully persuaded on what she had heard. And she knew that she would be saved. She knew that she would be healed. She knew that Jesus was her help. See, Jesus came to do the will of the Father. And she had heard this. Jesus came to be the king of the world and to bear witness of the truth. And she had heard this. It says that Jesus came to, to the world to seek and save the lost. Those who are in despair. Those who are in total fear. And she heard this. The Bible says that Jesus came into the world to be the light to the world. And not darkness. And it seems like everywhere we turn today, everywhere we go today, it's full of darkness. It's full of no hope. However, Jesus is that hope. 
It's full of lack of peace. However, Jesus is that peace. There's no love. However, Jesus is that love. And there's full of fear. And yet Jesus came teaching us faith. Jesus came into the world to give us abundant life. He came into the world to judge the world. Not to judge us who follow him, but to judge the darkness, to judge the confusion, to judge the sickness and disease, to judge all those things that cause us not to follow him. And this is the good news. This is the good news. Jesus says, for I have come forth that they may hear me and have life. Amen? Say Jesus. Say Jesus. See, the law of your land right now and the regulations and restrictions are all of man's fears. Some of you have been done wrong. Saying that someone saying that this is God's plan for you. But those are all man's fears. He didn't come into the world to divide men. He came into the world to, to separate his sheep and pull his sheep to him. The Bible says that he, his heart's desire is that none would perish. But that all come into a true understanding. His name is Jesus. And just the same as she heard from someone and was made whole. You now are hearing the good news and receiving that wholeness in your life. The Father sent him to be the Savior of the world. To be the Lamb, once and for all, slain for all mankind. And the Bible tells us that they took his body and they laid him in a tomb. And it says that his spirit he descended into hell and he made a show of the enemy openly why so that you would have life why else to give you the keys of death hell and the grave why do you do that so that you could live abundantly forever with him he came for you. He came to give you that life. He came so that you'd have that life more abundantly. He came to save you from your own destructions and from man's destructions. His name is Jesus. Say, Jesus. Say Jesus. Say Jesus. Say this with me. Say Jesus. Come into my heart. I confess you as Lord. And I believe that you're raised from the dead. And because of my confession. And my belief. I am born again. I am one with you. Jesus, you are my Lord. 
Jesus, you are my Lord. Now let me pray for you. Father, I thank you for each person here. I thank you for each person watching this. I thank you for each person receiving this. I thank you, Lord, that just the same as they have heard about you, that they are following you. They have received you. And I speak now to their bodies. And I say, body, be healed. Cancer, be be healed. You have no place in this body. Virus, be gone. You have no place in this body. Broken bones, be mended. You have no place in this body. Fear and confusion in your mind. Be healed. You have no place in this body. Yeah. 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 There's someone you're you have a trouble with your leg, your knee, or or, or uh, just just in the lower part of your leg and it hurts to walk I speak to that and I say be healed in Jesus name there, there, there's somebody there your back is bothering you it's in pain it's like whenever you get up it's a struggle to get up when you go to sit down it's a struggle to sit down you can't sit still you can't stand up I command that healing to your body in Jesus' name. Someone has a, has a bad fungus on their foot. Be healed in Jesus' name. Mm. <laughs> Someone just has... There, there, there are scabs and there's, there, there, there's all sorts of sores on your body. I speak healing and wholeness to your body in Jesus name. Mm. Cancer. <laughs> Cancer, you have no right. Be healed in Jesus name. Cancer be gone in that body. Be healed in Jesus name. Some of you are thinking you might have this flu, you might have this virus, whatever it is. Whatever they're telling you it is. We're, we're, we're speaking healing to you now in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. The older ones, we thank you for that protection around them. Healing in their bodies. The younger ones, they're, 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 we speak healing to your bodies in Jesus' name. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, some of you, God, you know, there, there, there's God is telling me to tell you that there's somebody that has done you wrong, that is that has hurt you physically, emotionally, in all ways possible, even financially, materially, even in your relationships. He's saying you need to forgive them. I know, I know, I just, I know, it's, it's like, Pastor, you don't know what, I, I do know. I've had a lot of people done me wrong. But you have to forgive them. Just the same as we have done God wrong before we walk with Him. We have to ask for forgiveness. We have to forgive them. Just the same as God forgives us, we have to forgive them. Mm. He loves you. He wants nothing but the best for you. Be healed in Jesus' name. Say, I receive my healing. I am whole. 
I am healed in Jesus' name. I am whole. Nothing missing. Nothing broken. I am healed. In Jesus' name. Now, if you're, if you're, those of you that are watching this and hearing this, get together with your leader there and let them know what change is taking place in you. If you receive Jesus, salvation, and you receive Jesus for the first time, let them know. If, you're, if you can tell that your body is physically healed and you can prove it to them, let them know so that we can be lifting you up here. See, we pray for you all the time. We're believing for you all the time. And we're expecting in you God to be great all the time. Amen. Say Jesus. Just lift your hand. Say Jesus. Lift your hand. Say Jesus. I thank you. I've been made whole. I am well. In Jesus name. Amen. Be blessed. And we love you.